Late last week, we got this tremendous quarter from Yeti Holdings, which makes high-performance outdoor products, especially coolers, drinkware, everything you need for a wild tailgate party. Stock stored 17% response on Thursday, breaking out of its long-term funk, going positive for the year. This was got me wondering, how is it that Yeti's has held up so much better than the stock of Newell Brands. That's a house consumer products that's a partial competitor to its Coleman Outdoor brand. Newell has a ton of other stuff. You probably, you, you have the stuff in, in your closet. Elmer's Glue, Paper Made, Sharpies, Rubber Made, Yankee Candle, Crock-Pot, Mr. Coffee, among other things. But these are two companies that make discretionary physical goods at a time when consumers increasingly want to spend their money on services or experiences. Now, their stocks roared during the pandemic then plummeted last year, first showing signs of life recently. Yeti caught fire last week. Now, Newell was actually the 16th best performer in the Russell 1000 last month. There is a key difference, though. Ever since the market bottomed roughly 10 months ago, Yeti stock has rebounded like crazy, up 61% from its lows last September. Well, Newell didn't bottom until this June, although it rebounded more than 35% in a short period of time. It's still down 19% for the year. Huh. Interesting. So what allowed Yeti to turn things around so much faster than Newell? And more important, can it continue to outperform? Now, first off, Yeti didn't get hit as hard in the first place. While the revenue growth did decelerate, slowing from 29% in 2021 to just 13% last year, their sales never shrank. Newell Brands, the other hand, went from just under 13% growth in 2021 to nearly 11% uh, revenue shrinkage in 2022. For the full year, Yeti's on track to generate 6.6% growth. That's okay. But the analysts expect Newell to see a 12% decline. Why didn't Yeti get hit as hard? I think it's because Yeti's the dominant brand in the category now. Newell, by contrast, has a ton of brands that are all over the map. They have too many brands, but very few are in as strong as Yeti's position in coolers. You can see this difference when you look at their gross margins, what they make on each dollar of revenue after subtracting the cost of goods sold. In the last few years, Yeti's gross margin has swung from the high 50s in 2021 to the low 50s last year. Newell, meanwhile, had already seen vicious gross margin contraction in the years leading up to COVID, and they didn't get any boost during the pandemic. Their gross margin just slipped from 33.8% in 2019 down to 30.2% last year. They were already pretty low to begin with, thanks to years of mismanagement. Fortunately, Newell brought in New CEO a few months ago. More on that later. By contrast, Yeti took a big profitability hit when things got ugly last year, but that happened off a much higher base. I have to admit, this move took a lot of people by surprise. Needless to say, Yeti's earnings proved to be a lot more resilient than Newell's when consumers pivoted away from buying actual stuff last year. And the contrast has only gotten more stark this year. For 2023, Wall Street expects Yeti to take a 3% earnings hit, while NLC Newell earnings plunging by 48% year over year. Now, the numbers are just better for Yeti across the board. They've got a nearly pristine balance sheet with more cash than debt. That's a nice reverse when it came public. Newell's got a heinous balance sheet with more than $5 billion in debt, which is a lot for a $4.4 billion company that used to have a pristine balance sheet. Yeti's never paid a dividend, but Newell's historically had a pretty generous dividend, at least until they had to slash the payout by 70% a few months ago, instantly taking its yield from 9.9% down to 3.3%. After the stock's, uh, the stock's rally last month, it only yields 2.6% here. The dividend got cut. It flushed out everyone who'd been sticking with this thing for income. Hey, by the way, that's why I always warn you. I say, please, stay away from anything with an inexplicably large high yield, like Newell had with a 9.9%, because it's often a sign that the dividend needs to be slashed. All that said, even though Yeti's held up much better than Newell, I think both stocks, and I know this is going to be curious, both stocks might be buys. They really might be. With Yeti, the bull case is pretty simple. Last week's ter terrific numbers. Uh, the company's on track to become a great growth story again, like it was when it came public. Sure, Yeti's sales came in weaker than expected, actually down 4% for the first time. But management raised, that's right, raised their full year uh, sales forecast at the same time, saying that the second half would be a lot stronger, especially the holidays. The current quarter might be pretty tepid, but in the fourth quarter, the consensus estimates call for 23% sales growth. You want to get in ahead of that kind of inflection. On the earnings front, they beat numbers and raised their full year guidance despite the tough sales environment. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Yeti has an up year for earnings, even as the analysts expect a small decline. That'd be a nice upside surprise. As for new brands, this one is a turnaround story now that the, the company's got new management. Back in May, the old CEO retired. Pres President Guy Miller, he'd been there for a while. Chris Peterson took the job. While he's not exactly a newcomer, he sure seems like a breath of fresh air. Do you know in his first day on the job, Peterson slashed a dividend? Painful move but a necessary one. He immediately saved the company $265 million per year. 
Then when Newell reported in late July, it felt like a kind of kitchen sink quarter you often get from the new CEO who wants to reset expectations. Everything was bad. The company actually delivered a top and bottom line beat for the quarter, but Peterson gave you lowball guidance for the next quarter, which is what really mattered, and slashed his full year outlook across the board. Tellingly, Newell's stock actually jumped nearly 8% response. Uh, trading like this was the last bad quarter, which is what you're always looking for. Last bad quarter is the single best time to invest. I'm looking for the same thing to happen with Estee Lauder, by the way, coming up on later this week. Finally, just last week, we learned that Newell's planning to close eight North American distribution centers by the end of next year, laying off 2% of the workforce in the process. They also plan to automate the remaining 20 warehouses, another sign that management is bending over backward to rain in costs, and they're closing a lot of their brands. They have way too many brands. Now, these two stocks represent two totally different value propositions. Yet is returning to growth uh, mode. It sells for 16.4 times next year's earnings estimates. Newell stock trades at less than 10 times next year's numbers at this point. It's a value play. Honestly, I prefer Yeti because they've made it very clear that business is about to come back in a big way. Newell still has a lot more work to do, a lot of things to turn around, but that's why the stock's so much cheaper. Let me give you the bottom line on both these. Both Yeti and Newell brands had a rough go of it for the past couple of years, but Yeti stock held up better thanks to stronger brand positioning and better management. Now that Newell's put in a new CEO, though, I think they can work, but these both, both can work higher. I'm not kidding. Yeti is an accelerating growth play, and Newell has a really interesting turnaround story with a lot of improvement ahead. Man Money is back after the break. Coming up, Disney bet big on gaming. What are the charts saying about this ESPN ante? Kramer makes the tackle next. <laughs> 